Chapter 3, Molecules, Compounds, and Chemical Equations. How many different substances exist? What do you think? I don't think anybody can actually answer this question with a solid number. Um, because for one thing, scientists are making new compounds all the time. So elements, we talked about there's 91 naturally occurring elements. Um, elements combine to form compounds. And so when you've got 91 different compounds combining, and they can combine in different ratios, and it's not just limited to two, compound, two elements per compound, you could have five different elements or whatever. The number of compounds that exist or could exist is, is practically limitless, right? Lots of them. Um, we see great diversity in nature among different substances. You know, the qualities of, the properties of water are very different from the properties of, say, the, the material that the benches are made out of. Um, so there's all sorts of different materials. And that's a result of the ability of elements to form compounds. So elements are important, but most of what we deal with is compounds. So let's look at hydrogen and oxygen and water. So here's a table with some of the properties of hydrogen, an element, oxygen, an element, and water, which is a compound. So the boiling point of hydrogen and oxygen those boiling points are far, far below zero degrees Celsius, the freezing point of water. Um, the boiling point of water is 100 degrees Celsius. So we see there's a dramatic difference in boiling point. At room temperature, oxygen and hydrogen are gases and water is a liquid. There are great differences in flammability as well. Hydrogen is an explosive gas. Oxygen is not technically explosive, but it is the ingredient necessary with something else for combustion. And yet water is not only not flammable, but it's used to put out fire, right? So tremendous differences. We take those two elements, hydrogen and oxygen, combine them into water, the properties change. We've got a new compound, completely different properties. <coughs> We've talked about the law of definite proportions. Um, this hydrogen-oxygen mixture, if we just mix the two gases, we could have any proportions of hydrogen and oxygen. It could be half and half, a little bit of hydrogen, lots of oxygen. It could be any, any ratio. In water, which is a compound, there are individual molecules, and each of those always has two hydrogen atoms to one oxygen atom. Every molecule is the same. Two hydrogens, one oxygen. Oxygen. That is a definite proportion. Okay? So water has a definite proportion of hydrogen to oxygen. The definite proportion is true of all compounds. So here we have this illustrated. This is a hydrogen and oxygen mixture. You could have any ratio of hydrogen to oxygen, but in water, the ratio is always the same. That's an important difference between a mixture and a compound. The other difference is in the mixture, we see that we have two different kinds of particles. There's the oxygen particles and the hydrogen particles. Whereas water only has one kind of particle. All those particles are identical. And so that's a hallmark of a compound. <coughs> So, any questions? We, we had talked about and did some problems on a worksheet about the law of definite proportions where we looked at masses of each element and the ratios of the masses were the same. The reason that the ratio of the masses is the same is that the ratio of the numbers of atoms is the same. 